Um, so your extremely athletic play, let's start with that. How, how you managed that downing at the one. Um, I, I knew kind of going into that situation that there are a couple different possibilities would kind of play out. I didn't, I didn't know if they would include me or not, but um, when they, when they went, you know, double gunner, so they're in a seven box situation, I knew they were going to try to force us to, uh, to down the ball inside the 10. And so I, I kind of knew, Hey, if this ball is rolling on the ground, we're going to try to let the clock roll out as much as, as much as we can. So I kind of had a thought that that might, might come up. And I was really using that to, communicate with the rest of the guys so when the ball goes so when we punt the ball and we're heading down I'm one of the first guys out um and so luckily there wasn't anybody on me so I could look up find the ball and get a sense and so uh, the returner did a really nice job of decoying uh looked like he was tracking the ball but I could tell that he was decoying just because I'd actually had an opportunity to get get the flight of the ball so ball was a beautifully hit punt by Joe landed on its belly so it bounces straight up and from there you know it's just I knew I was going to be able to make a play. I knew I'd be able to to be kind of on the on the correct side of the goal line. Um, so I, you know, kind of like took my old baseball instincts. Kind of took over. I yelled, "I got it! I got it! I got it!" Grabbed it. Um, didn't know how many steps I'd be able to get in. Knew I was going to keep the ball out of the end zone at all costs. And so as soon as I felt myself going in, I didn't feel Jeremy there. Um, as soon as I felt myself going in, I turned around looking for someone to throw it to. Uh, kind of thinking I was going to throw it to about the five, but uh, AG was standing right there looking right at me. So it was an easy kind of pitch and catch there. And then he caught it and then he flipped it. And of course, th then it kind of started to look like a circus after that. But uh, it was a fun play. It was exciting to be a part of. Um, I'm glad that uh, I went through the review process and the right call was made. And um, but it, was a, it was a fun play. It was impactful. And it's fun to help contribute a little bit on special teams. All right, let's go to Miles and then David. JJ, I think uh, we saw on the telecast, you, know, you were saying that you had it, you had it. And after the review had gone through, when did you really realize that it wasn't going to be a touchback? And did you have a sense when you made the play that, you know, you had possession in two feet and all that? Uh, I didn't know how many steps I got in. So I, I never was under the impression that that rule would apply. Cause I just, I didn't know how many steps I'd actually gotten in as soon as the ball as soon as I gathered myself, I just told myself I was going to get the ball back in play. So um, once once it went up on video um, and the review process took over and I saw myself get two feet and I knew we were going to get it. Um, but at, while it was happening, I never once thought to myself, uh, I'm trying to get two feet down as much as I was trying to get as many feet as I could down and then throw it. Um, trying to take cover all my bases. Um, and so that was kind of how that one played out. Um, but I... You know, normally a few people have mentioned, like, they'll see me talking to the officials, trying to get rules clarifications. I didn't know how many steps I got in, so I wasn't about to argue something. I didn't know what it really had happened. So, um, and but I'm glad that it went to the rules official and then, um, and obviously they made the right call. Hey, JJ, David here. Um, as a guy that's been around the team more than anybody, um, what did that meeting last week where I think Teddy wanted people to stand up and talk and let, a lot of people get to know each other because he felt like they really hadn't had that opportunity to. What do you feel like that meant to the team? Were there any stories in particular that stood out to you? Yeah, I, I would let each guy kind of tell their own story, but you know, from, from a bonding standpoint, you know, a lot of us don't know each other and guys, we know a lot about each other, but not really on a, on a personal level and uh, the co COVID rules and masks and, and just the limited time we've had together kind of play into that. Um, and then when, once you get back, you're in such a hurry to handle football stuff um, that you really – you're trying to play catch up there, new offense, new defense, uh, new schemes and special teams. And so um, I don't know that we spent enough time getting together. And so that was just a limitation that we had as a new group. And so for, it, for guys to be able to just kind of tell a little bit about themselves, there's important stories for each player, why they play, who they play for, just – getting to know each other. So to be able to have a little bit of time to kind of start to unpack that a little bit, uh, I think helps with bonding. Uh, I don't know that it necessarily helps you run a better route or snap a better ball, but it certainly helps when you're kind of riding the emotional roller coaster of a game or a season to feel like, Hey, these are my brothers on the field. And, and uh, I know a little bit more about them. The personal connection always helps guys play better with each other um, on the emotional level. Go to Jason Huber for the next question, and then Joe Person. 
Hey, JJ, uh, Jason with uh, WFNZ. As, you know, kind of going off that point, as one of the guys who's, you're the longest tenured player here, and, and Matt Rule spoke a lot about how he doesn't, you know, you guys want to win. You don't, it's not a rebuild in your heads. And just what have you seen from this team, and especially getting that win, ending that long losing streak, and just kind of the emotions going on right now in the locker room. And as a guy who's been at the bottom here, been at the top, and just seeing this now. You know, the, the 2020 Carolina Panthers were 0-2. So, obviously, there's been guys who lost games at the end of last season. I was part of that group last year. But uh, it, this is a new team. It's a new team every year. Um, it's a new group of guys. And so, I don't know that, uh, at least personally, I didn't feel like an, an extra burden because we'd lost 10 in a row. I'd kind of honestly forgotten about it. You're worried about this season. Um, you're trying to win each week. You're trying to go 1-0. and And you can't worry about the weeks before or, you know, the future weeks. Not because not because it's it's wrong, but just there's so much that goes into a single week. If you if you kind of go beyond that, um, I think it'd be very overwhelming. And um, so, I, obviously, when you get the first win of a season, any season, uh, it begins to sort of validate some of the hard work that you've put in. Uh, the tough part the tough part of football is you spend months and months and months uh, going through the emotional and physical tolls of preparing for a game, and you only get payoffs. You know, if you win one out of 16 games, you know, each week is its own unique payoff. So to kind of validate the hard work that we've put in uh, to let guys know that, the you know, the process is working and that we're getting better as a team each week. Um, the wins always help to validate that the losing can be helpful in that you you probably spend more time kind of figuring out what you've done wrong. And when you win, you maybe human nature is to overlook it. So that's something that we've got to fight every week. Um because yeah, I want to be able to have to fight human nature every week, winning and going one and zero each week, and um, and being able to celebrate with your teammates. Hey JJ, prior to uh, that meeting that David asked you about, uh, Matt was saying that Monday was kind of a tough day. That there was a lot of kind of tough, honest conversations after that loss to Tampa. Wonder if you could kind of take us back through that uh, to the level you're able to and and then how important the the, the follow-up meetings were yeah I think uh, Mondays every Monday is, is a is a big week you know a big part of the week whether you win or lose because you're going over all the good and bad that happened in the week um, I think last Monday was particularly uh, challenging just because I think we felt like we played Tampa well but we didn't but we didn't play well if that makes sense. And so to be able to, to really, with a fine tooth comb and really honest, here's where we did poorly, here's where we, we played well. And sometimes the truth kind of hurts, right? And, and, and guys, um, you know, we all put a little bit of, hopefully not all of our identity, but we put a little bit of our identity in being a football player and, and performing to the, our highest potential. And so when you're not performing that well or, you know, individually or as a group, it's hard to hear the truth that you're not doing that well. And so the honest conversations, though, are what kind of move you forward. Hey, we're doing this well. We're not doing this well. Um, and, and so those conversations after losses, um, it's a harder honesty. But whether you win or lose, I think every week's pretty honest. Um, it's just a little harder to take when you lose. But to then come back, have a great Wednesday, great Thursday, it makes Monday worth it because you start building from there. It doesn't tear you down. It doesn't beat you up. Um, and then you just methodically – through the process, work Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and you make the previous losses help you going forward um, if you keep building on it. And I think that was that was a big thing this week is I just felt like each day we got better as a team. We got more cohesive as a team. Um, I always think these long West Coast trips can do a lot for a team. Uh, you get to spend more time together, um, kind of battle through – you know, time change and, and being in a road game and doing all those things. Uh, for those of you that remember last year, that was a big week. We went to Arizona last week and it was, or last year, and that was kind of a big thing early in the season. So I kind of like these long road trips. So it came at a great time to, to take a tough loss in Tampa and then starting from Monday, just build right through it uh, and methodically getting better each day. All right, guys, we have time for three more. So let's go to Brett then Mike Salarte, and then finish with Jonathan Alexander. Hey, JJ. Uh, I'm curious, you know, Ron, John Fox was a football guy, and Ron Rivera was a football guy, and you are 
you know, a very big time student of the game, you know, all the aspects. When you found out that you were getting a college coach with like basically almost zero NFL experience, I know he had the one year with the Giants, but I mean, were you a little apprehensive about that because you've been here forever? And then maybe your thoughts then compared to where your thoughts are now. Uh, not, no apprehension at all. And I would just almost kind of correct, like Matt Rule's a football guy, uh, played at Penn State, has been coaching and playing his whole life. Uh, you, you, that jumps off the page when you meet him, when you see what his teams did at Baylor and Temple. Um, football is football. Um, and so the, the process of being a head coach, whether it's, you know, little league, you know, high school, uh, college, the NFL, it, you know, they all build on self building a team, putting a group of guys together. And so as a guy who has been with some other head coaches and Mike McCarthy, when I was in green Bay before him, um, you know, you see all of the elements of a really good head coach. The minute you sent spend five minutes with him um, and he's a football man and he cares deeply about the game and he cares deeply about people. And I think that's why uh, you're seeing the camaraderie here, building and building and building. And again, you've seen the same thing at previous head stop head, head coaching stops. The advantage I think that coach rule has had that I think it's overlooked. People look at what he's done in, in college and say, well, he's done it in college, but not too many head coaches get to be head coaches twice before they come to the NFL. Usually there's a coordinator spot or something like that. It's a whole new ball game being a head coach. So we really get to benefit from, from the, uh, from the aspects that he's had to do this with two other programs. So he knows what works, what doesn't um, the NFL presents its own challenges, just like the big 12 did just like it happened at temple. So we get all those advantages um, that he brings to the table here. And I think it's been helpful because as we've had to do this kind of quickly here with, with the late start in COVID, I think that that really works to our advantage. Hey, JJ, Mike Salarte, Spectrum News one. There I am. <laughs> uh, you know, for the longest time, you were you were snapping balls to Michael Polardi. You guys had such a great re rapport uh, in the kicking game. How's the transition been with Joey uh, Charlton back there? Because, it, you know, for those of us that have never been a long snapper or, or know the intricacies and the timing and all that stuff, what has that been like for you guys through camp and through three games? Uh, I, I think we just kind of keep getting better and better as a group. Um, the uniqueness, right, is – where does each holder, each punter like the ball? So my job is just, I, I always say, my job is to deliver the mail. So where do you want it? And I'm going to do my best to put it there. So Mike being left-footed, he wants the ball on the left side. Joe being right-footed, he wants the ball on the right side. Mike liked punt snaps to be a little bit more down. Joe would prefer the ball to be a little bit more up. And in different situations, he wants the ball a little bit higher, a little bit lower. And so I'm doing my best to kind of deliver the mail that way. Um, so I think... So much can happen in talking about, hey, how are we going to mesh this thing together? And then I think you just need reps because you figure out, um, hey, what do you, what do you like and and don't like? And 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 Joe has got caught up to speed really really fast. He's working a ton with Joey uh, from the holder perspective, um, and so we're just every week we're learning more about each other, how we perform, how, what we like, um, and so you know. The advantage I had with Mike is that, you know, for four years, I got to learn him and learn him and learn him. But I remember that first week that he was here in 2016, we were playing a Thursday night game against, you know, New Orleans. And I was learning him on the fly during the week. Um, so whether it's, you know, three days or three months or three games, um, there's always adjustments. You're always learning. Um, but that process, it just, it continues to get refined and we'll keep doing that. But I think we're off to a really good start. Joe's hitting the ball great. Um, he's doing a great job holding for Joey. And so we're just, we're going to kind of keep improving and tweaking and then kind of figure out how we can apply that to the rest of the, the punt and field goal team. Hey, JJ. Um, Jonathan Alexander, Shaw Dezer. Hope you're doing well. I am. Thank you. Um, I'm wondering, um, you know, how do you think um, yesterday's win um, will help you all in the grand scheme of things of what you all are trying to build? What's the future? Great question. I think I think winning validates the process. Um, it, it shouldn't, you know, we, you know, anyone that's a process oriented person knows like 
the outcome doesn't reflect the process, but we're humans. And so we want to see the payoff of hard work. And maybe we're doing things that are a little bit different than it used to be done, or maybe uh, there's new reasons or uh, whys that are applied. So when you win, I think it validates, hey, what we're doing is working. Um, if we focused only on winning, I think we would lose sight of the process. And I don't think that's good for developing teams. But I do think it's, hey, remember last week when we put in really good Wednesdays and Thursdays coming out of a Monday where we were real honest with each other? That led towards victory. So let's go back and reaffirm that process. Next, you know, right now we're going through it today, going through the good, going through the bad. Sometimes it's easier for coaches to coach harder on Mondays after a win because guys aren't emotionally feeling the drain of a loss. So you can coach them harder. But now the process is, Hey, last week when we took Monday and moved that into Wednesday and Thursday, let's do that again. And so I think winning validates it. Um, you know, one win does not, you know, make a season. It doesn't make a turnaround or anything like that, but you're, each week we're trying to go one and oh, so we accomplished our goal last week. Uh, and now as we move forward with, with Arizona, the goal is to go one and zero again. Doesn't matter what we've done in the past. We're going to focus all of our energy uh, on this week, and then when th when this week ends, we'll worry about the week after. And so, just trying to keep it very process oriented. Take each day as the most important day of the of the week, and then Sundays will take care of themselves.